this video, we're going to go over the two categories of evidence. Um, this is a very broad topic of uh, the type of quality of evidence that are presented at trial, and it's direct and circumstantial. Direct evidence is anything that a witness observes, whether it's through their sight, through their smell, through their ears, or what they said. That's all direct evidence. I saw the robbery. I heard the scream. I could smell a fire, okay? I said, don't do this, okay? Those are all be evidence of direct testimony. When that happens, the jury can accept or reject my testimony based on what they believe my credibility is as a person. Um, if they think I'm a liar, they can reject it all. If they think I'm truthful, they can believe it all. Or they can even believe me with all sincerity, but if my testimony is inconsistent with other things that they believe that's more credible, they're free to reject parts or all of it. So that's direct testimony. Um, and the next is circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence is basically an evidentiary conclusion the jury makes based on other established facts. There's really two common examples courts like to talk about on this to kind of make the point. Um, one is that um, you know, you're in a building that has no windows and you see people start coming in, they're all wet, one of them is holding an umbrella, and they're all just drenched wet. And you're like, hmm, I guess it started to rain. So the observable fact is wet people Someone has an umbrella, and again, they're all wet. So what must have happened? It rained, and it's raining right now. That is the circumstantial inference. The other example people use is that, hey, if I put a cat and a mouse in a box and I seal it up, and then I come back an hour later, and there's just the cat, what happened to the mouse? The inference is, well, the mouse must have been eaten by the cat, right? So circumstantial evidence is enough to convict, but because it's not direct um, and you have to make some inferences, the state relying upon circumstantial evidence must disprove every reasonable hypothesis of innocence. And if they can, then you can actually have a conviction based on circumstantial evidence alone. So in our examples, what would you want to show to defeat that case? Well, if you can show, if the defense attorney can show that they just installed a sprinkler system in that building and that it malfunctioned and went off, well, that could explain why the people were wet. And if the state can't disprove that that happened by, after the presentation of that evidence, then there's just not enough to convict on that. With a cat and a mouse, obviously, if you can show there's a hole in the box or wasn't sealed properly, leaving, for, leaving room for the possibility that the mouse escaped, well, if you can establish that, then you defeat the circumstantial evidence case. So there's two other, there's two rules I also wanna make sure you know. Um, that with these categories of evidence, circumstantial evidence alone is enough to convict, but you need to disprove every reasonable hypothesis of innocence. And even with direct testimony, the testimony of one witness alone, if believed, is enough to convict. If you have any questions, you can email me. Um, I'll put my email uh, at the list, at the, uh, the little notes below, uh, and you can also uh, call me uh, at the number listed here, 927-1234.